Hi everyone, welcome to another episode by Poor Man Gamer. Today we're gonna go through a few videos to see if an aggressive not deck like the one you see here, for example, works in the Masters League. And uh, so far I've had a lot of uh, great results. To be honest with you, I actually found the Diamond League a little more challenging than the uh, Masters League. I'm thinking a lot of good players are intentionally holding back so that they can have weaker opponents and the rivals champions. Um, uh, that's the uh, working theory I have. If you guys have any other theories, please let me know because the last few opponents I've played, they're not that good. So either I suddenly became really amazing overnight, which isn't the case, or a lot of great players are holding back. So anyway, here's my aggressive deck. I'm using a chem buggy as opposed to a nod buggy, All right, just to mix it up a little bit. And as you can see, the power of the rifleman to counter against those who open with a um, laser squad. Uh, it, it's pretty effective, right? Because with 10 Tiberium, I have him committed to building a whole lot of infantry units, right? And as you can see here, it works pretty well because out comes my chem buggy, which is going to make quick work of all his uh, flame squads. As you can see there, I mean, he doesn't really have a chance. He just went down without really doing much damage to me. And down goes his laser squad. And uh, the chem buggy is very, very effective. Now, this guy does a great job countering with the uh, laser drones, right? I totally forgot that the laser drones can actually be a very powerful unit. I try to roll up my bike here and uh, unfortunately wasn't able to get good results. I'm trying my best to keep the missile count going up, which is why I stepped off, but now he's stepping off and uh, he's been kind of a thorn on, on my side. So now I step back onto that missile, just trying to keep it going again because I opened with a rifleman. I had him commit to a lot of infantry units in the beginning. So um, he's spent quite a bit of Tiberium now, um, just rolling out his infantry, right? And it allows me to build up an economy and roll up my Banshee. So there's my Banshee, and for the rest of this game, I am completely wide open in terms of any units I want to use, because I've already opened all of my buildings. And uh, now it's really just a matter of contesting the missile. He does a pretty good job for the most part. I'm able to take him out, and um, out comes a uh, laser squad. What I should have done here, so mistake, should have moved my laser squad down, moved my Banshee across, instead of just letting my Rifleman take more damage. But fortunately, I have a, a bit of an economy going, and I haven't built that many units yet. So my Banshee is able to make really quick work out of his uh, air units, and having the laser squad there is even more advantageous. I believe he was trying to jump on all three tiles. It didn't work out for him, and we we're quite easily able to secure this first missile. And so I immediately go back up, and I start pressuring his harvester once again. Um, and I boost up my uh, Banshee. I go ahead and uh, quick make again make quick work out of all of his units, and now I've got banshees. I've got the chem buggy coming out once again to do more damage against his infantry. I've got my banshee to protect it now against those uh, laser drones, right? And I'm just trying my best here to keep even more pressure on his harvester. As you can see here, I'm gonna actually roll out a tank. The reason I do that is because the tank uh, can take a bit of damage in case he decides to fly down and. Uh, I use one Banshee that's, a, that's charged up to protect my second Banshee and just a tremendous amount of pressure on all of his harvesters. I leave my Banshee there so that if he ever decides to roll out another harvester, it's just going to do more damage. At this stage of the game, I felt that I've taken out his economy pretty well. Right, He's trying to roll his laser squad now, but I believe it's going to be just too little too late. I'm on all three tiles. He can't contest me enough and all of that pressure harmed his economy. And yes, so this speed aggressive deck worked really well against this opponent. We it were fairly matched up, evenly matched up in the beginning, and um, the rifleman was really the key to the victory. So now we're gonna take a look at another match here, and I will show you guys what I mean by the opponent seems a bit easier. I don't think I've gotten any better, to be honest with you. I haven't. Um, is getting to a stage of the game now where I do have a level advantage against players in the Masters League. I'm level 10 and they're level 9, but all my level 10s are pretty weak level 10s, right? They're just a tad stronger. So once again, I open with a Harvester. Because this is such a big map, I am not afraid to go ahead and roll out my um, Rifleman right off the start. So there you are, right? I'm gonna run across, I'm gonna scout. He's parked his Laser Squad there, which really doesn't do, or uh, Missile Squad doesn't do much against my Rifleman. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start pressing his Harvester. 
And uh, what I did there was I moved my rifleman back to tile block or body block his uh, laser squad so he has to walk all the way around. It allows my bike to do a little bit more damage and every time he moves his rifleman, uh, his laser, laser troopers in or missile troopers in, it just stalls him out even more. Now I'm on two tiles. I'm trying to sneak my tank out across the bottom. I'm keeping the missile going this entire time, right? And uh, right now I am just trying to stack my tank on top of my rifleman. I didn't do a very good job microing here. And uh, boom, there it is. I get a couple shots on him. Get another shot of him while the rifleman's taking damage. I am able to roll up my knob buggy. I do see an APC. Uh, my knob buggy will make quick work of that APC. I'm just gonna body block him. Uh, <laughs> he opens his lieutenant's strong arm, but it's gonna be too little, too late. We got this first missile. I roll out another tank because all I see right now are a lot of ground units. I don't see any air units coming out of him. My knob buggy should make pretty quick work of his uh, laser squad. I move my scorpion tanks down in hopes of pressing him even more. This whole time he aggressively protects his uh, harvester really really well. I'm not sure what it is he's trying to accomplish here. So once again I use my rifleman of all units to just go ahead and take out his uh, laser, his missile squads uh, really quickly. I'm waiting for an opening, right? Uh, there's my opening. Uh, to pressure his harvester, so I keep him off the Tiberium. I don't necessarily have to kill his harvester as long as he's not mining. I'm winning, right? So all this pressure paid off. I am able to snipe him. Um, he was charging the missile for me with his uh, with his pit bull. I do see his uh, laser as missile squad, so I immediately push my tank away and just park it there and put more pressure on his harvester. He has no economy now. Whereas I've got almost 400 Tiberium. He smartly rolls out a uh, Orca, but I mean, it's just too little too late at this time. I don't care if I lose a tank. Out comes my Banshee, a whole bunch of pressure, and they, the game's over. Right? So, a very aggressive playstyle with a very light deck. And uh, it's been paying off for me. So, I'm going to show you guys one more game here um, a game with a nod. Uh, this guy has all level 10s charge up and level 11s, and as you can see here, I am significantly weaker than him. And I'm going to show you uh, guys here a really fun match. I actually open with a harvester, but I st and I get rushed. So uh, it gets pretty cool, so check this out. So I'm on the right hand side, he's on the left hand side. I'm going to show you guys the strategy I used to survive. So right now, I don't know that he opened with a jump jet squad. It's a very aggressive open. I do see it and I immediately, I should have immediately rolled out my rifleman. The reason I didn't was because, <laughs> funny, my cell phone was running out of battery and I wanted to charge it up. So I actually stopped paying attention. I looked away for a second and how comes the jump jet? So right there, bang, 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 bang. I micro away my harvester to try to keep it alive, right? I go ahead and protect my harvester even more. He actually takes a pretty smart route so that I can't double team his uh, jump jet squad. Fortunately, my harvester survives or else this game would have gone very, very differently. I have now opened my own tank to try to pressure his uh, harvester and I keep my rifleman there to make sure the missile count is going. I make sure I get first fire advantage and I open a knob buggy. I don't care if that rifleman dies because that knob buggy is going to do some good damage against him. He does a pretty good job uh, protecting his jump jet, uh, using his jump jet to protect the um, the harvester there. I'm on two tiles. I thought I had this, which is why I moved my tank down. But he aggressively pushed his, um, pushes his jump jet squad all the way across. So now I have to sacrifice my scorpion tank against his jump jet squad in order for me to win this missile. And um, sacrifice a tank, but I win the missile. Totally worth it. Again, so this is really cool. I've never rolled out four riflemen before this late into the game. But I do it because he seems to love his level 11 jump jet squads. Um, I'm really impressed he even has level 11 jump jet squads. He blew up my harvester, he has a huge economic advantage. But as you can see here, he opens a double harvester. I guess he's really trying to build up for these tech lab units. But I never let my... Um, I, love it. I never let this missile count ever slow down. So you're going to see here he rolls out a sandstorm. And guys, this is why you don't fall in love with high level units. I body block him with a rifleman of all units. And because I am on all three tiles, and he's got three units here that are useless against infantry, there really isn't much he can do. So because I kept the missile count going this whole time, 
I actually quite easily win this match after surviving that initial jump jet rush. This guy with his high level units, I think he uh, he probably would have crushed me if I wasn't able to pressure him in the beginning, right? And um, so there you go. Those are three matches here. We're gonna take a look at. Yeah, this guy wasn't very good. So you know what? We're not gonna go watch it. I'm gonna show you guys a deck I've been using on the GDI side. So besides an aggressive, not deck. You can totally still use a GDI deck and it still works really, really well. This is in the Diamond League, one down from the Masters. I find the opponents here are actually a bit stronger. So here, smaller map, it's important to scout. So that's why I open with a War Factory and I open with my War Dog to immediately take a look. So there you go, I survived the tank rush. So here's what I did. I do see his tank. I don't want to engage him with my war dogs. I open with my own predator tank. I haven't built a harvester and fortunately I didn't. I scouted. I saw that he had a scorpion tank. At the same level one on one the predator tank is going to win. Scorpion tanks are faster but predator tanks are beefier and stronger. So here's a tip for you guys. If you guys are using a predator tank against bikes, because predator tanks fire so slowly, it really really helps to have a pit bull or uh, any other unit and stack on top to protect your predator tank. The reason I say that is because the bikes, uh, one shot from a tank takes out one of the bike units but that, that still leaves two surviving units. If you can use a stacking method and gang up on a bike, it really makes your life a lot easier. Now I'm just charging up the missile. The guy never built a harvester. I'm saving for harvester now. He opens with a laser squad, but I'm just doing a little bit more damage against his base. I go ahead and send my uh, war dog down to engage his rifleman, and I pull my pip. Uh, I move my pit bull back. Right, I'm just trying to keep this missile charged up. I open with my barracks now because I have an economy. I do hear see a cyber wheel. Not really a massive concern of, of mine. You can see now he smartly stalls out the missile. Right, so now I'm just uh, trying to push my way down. I step off the missile. Uh, and I switch it up. I go ahead and go after his cyber wheel. It's only level 6. I open with a jump jet squad because I wasn't sure if he had a harvester at this time or not. And the missile squads don't really... And it's a lot faster, right? I moved. I used the jump jet squad because I needed speed to get down there to charge up that missile. He still doesn't have a harvester. I don't know why he's using this technique. And it's going to massively, massively backfire for him. So I'm on two missiles now. I go ahead and... Uh, I let my jump jet squad die. There's my shockwave coming out to finally do some damage against him. I move my other shockwave troop down just to see if he has a harvester. He still doesn't. I figured at this stage of the game, like this guy's an idiot. I had enough of him. I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I can base rush him impossible. So I open my jump jet squad there and um, I push down to quickly wipe out his cyber wheels. Um, boom, 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 down goes his cyber wheels and now I'm just pressuring his base. I'm just, I'm actually just trying to go ahead and, uh, so here's the weakness of a tank as you can see here. Tanks against these units, yes they are powerful shots but they can only take them out one at a time. Whereas a pit bull is a lot more effective because of the rate of fire. Right, so these cyber wheels are very good against uh, people with heavy tanks because they fire one shot at a time but as you can see here, a pit bull is going to make very very quick work of them. Uh, guys, just as an advice, if you've got really weak units like like you saw over there, don't bother rolling them out, right? Against a half decent player, they're just gonna get crushed. So there you go, an aggressive deck using GDI and not. It's been very effective, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. And if you guys are in the Masters League, let me know your thoughts. If you found the opponents to be um, this seemingly quite easy, okay? Thanks, guys, and have a wonderful day. Take care.